and welcome to this webinar called Loss and Grief During COVID-19. During this pandemic, we've had many changes in our lives, some positive and some negative. The thing we've seldom talked about is the many losses that have happened and how it's impacted us. Some of the big losses or big changes in our life may be more obvious, but there are many small, subtle losses that also have an impact. So today we're going to look at navigating all these different feelings and impacts during this difficult time. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Teresa Willoughby, and along with my colleague Anne LeBlanc, we are both mental health and wellness counselors in counseling services, student life at the University of Ottawa. So today we're going to be looking at what is grief, exploring that in more detail. Look at some of the specific losses that are related to the pandemic and COVID-19. We're going to talk about some ways of coping, some you're already doing and some may be some new ideas. We'll talk about some resources on campus, in the community, and online. So what is grief? We know that grief is it's universal, it's a normal response to any kind of losses or changes in our life. It could be a change in your daily routine, all the way to the loss of a loved one. Some of those common reactions you might see are shock, disbelief, denial, anxiety, stress, anger, periods of sadness, or mood fluctuations. And it can really change your routine, your sleep, your appetite. Grief affects you know, all different parts of ourselves, from our emotions to our thinking, uh, our actions, and even our physical wellness. We often associate loss to some big change, but they can be a lot of little changes. Uh, like I mentioned before, they may be more sub subtle. It can sometimes feel like you're going through a roller coaster of different feelings and it's hard to make sense of what's happening. So thinking of grief as a process, there's no right or wrong, wrong way to grieve. And while there is some information on different categories uh, or things that you might go through, it's not a linear process. It's really individual and unique to you and your experiences you've had of loss and grief in your life. So if we look at this picture of the spiral, it gives us a good analogy for how we might understand grief. As we you know, go up the spiral, we're going round and round, it can feel like we're not making much change or progress but we really are going up. There is some movement, but it may be small and subtle. So have patience with yourself. That is going to take, um, for some people, a day, a week, a month, or a year, whatever process it takes, whatever timeline it takes, um, that's going to be unique to you. What is the difference between grief and mourning? We often look at grief, that's the way we react to loss. And mourning is the way we express grief. So that could be crying, being emotional, writing, art, music, maybe some rituals and religious practices. In any culture, in any community, um, everyone's experience of mourning is a unique process. Uh, but it is a process of kind of going through some ups and downs. Grief and mourning can be expressed individually, kind of on your own, or maybe as a collective with your family or your community. And that there really is no right or wrong way to do it. One of the most distressing things about the pandemic is the amount of loss that we're all experiencing and processing. Here's a list of some of the things that people have mentioned that they are going through specific to the pandemic. So economic security and stability, a health or illness or fluctuations in your health, a death in the family or with friends, stability and having a sense of safety, a sense of personal freedom and autonomy, being able to connect and have uh, relationships with your friends and family and supports in your life. And even you know, I've heard a lot about um, missing being in class and seeing your teachers being able to ask questions, right? And that's a change in how we connect. Academic stability, a lot of changes um, going online, 
whatever year you're in, it's looking different this year and for next semester. Those uh, opportunities we have to celebrate and have traditions, whether it's you know, vacations, graduation, funeral, weddings, just gatherings together, we've had to postpone or change them. The hopes, the plans, the expectations you had for the semester, for the year, and um, we've been dealing with a lot. And there's a lot of uncertainty going forward about what's going to happen, and that can make uh, grief more complicated and difficult to cope with. So there are many different ways to cope with grief and process grief. Some are healthier than others. Just try to be kind, compassionate to yourself wherever you are with your grief and try to incorporate some of the different ideas that we're going to talk about right now. So name and validate your feelings. Whatever you're feeling, just trying to make some time to explore that. Uh, let it kind of uh, present itself and go through it. Set a routine for yourself, trying to wake up and go to bed around similar times. Get enough sleep, uh, consistent healthy eating, trying to move, get some exercise. Trying to stay focused on the present. Our minds have a tendency to go in the past or in the future, um, and that can be um, you know, important and helpful, um, but also trying to spend some time in the moment, in the present. Celebrate the positive. Notice the things that are happening around you in your day, in moments where you are feeling okay or good. Taking care of yourself and finding opportunities to recharge, so that could be creative outlets, it could be shows or connecting with others, whatever it is that uh, can help with that. Avoid comparing yourself with others. Uh, we have a tendency definitely to do that in social media or if others are grieving that they may be coping differently. Lean on your family and friends for support. So try to connect with them, uh, even if it's just to do things together uh, to keep those connections. Seeking support in your community, that could be, you know, virtual groups for resources, uh, gathering uh, socially distant in parks, uh, whatever it may be for you. So traps to avoid. We're all trying our best to, you know, sometimes cope with all the different losses and changes in grief, but there are some things that may make it worse. Drugs, alcohol, gaming, Gambling, food, those are all okay in moderation, but can really impact um, the grieving process if they're done more frequently or uh, more addictive. Isolation can be really challenging. Sometimes you need downtime to recharge, but if you're by yourself a lot, it can really impact how you're feeling. Just think about excesses. You know, sometimes uh, you know, work a lot, eat, sleep, exercise, study, maybe, you know, looking on social media, or watching TV. Those are all very fine things in moderation, but sometimes they can take up a lot of time and get you out of your routine or schedule. So how can you help others who are coping with grief? Everyone has different experiences about, um, you know, with grief and how they talk about grief. And they you know, may be well-meaning, others may be well-meaning. Some people may avoid it, ask you directly or in a roundabout way. And here are just some ideas of what could be helpful. So being a good listener. Um, when we see someone in distress, you know, often we might jump to trying to help or problem solve with them. And maybe what they need in that moment is just someone to listen and let them kind of go through all their thoughts and feelings about it. Ask how they're feeling. It might surprise you, uh, the range of feelings, or just to ask that question and get them to think about it more. Sometimes just sitting with them, wherever they are in their grief, whatever they're doing, and just being uh, present with them. And share your own feelings um, about uh, the grief experience you may be going through together, or what's been helpful for you. Ask about their loss during the pandemic. What are some of the changes or things that really impacted them and uh, more about what they're experiencing. Remember the loss. So trying to you know, check in and if there's an anniversary or date that might be significant to um, connect with them at that time. Contact them, text, call, um, try to socially distant, you know, do some things together. That's all important, even if it's not always consistent with the person who's grieving. 
acknowledge that they may be in pain, they may be going through you know, fluctuations in the mood and energy, and that's all okay. Let them feel whatever they need to feel. Uh, be available when you can. And if not, you know, there's some great resources in the next couple slides that you could also provide them. Do not minimize the grief. It is, you know, their experience. That's what they're going through, and that's important to them. You can talk about your own losses, as we mentioned before, um, how it, you know, is helpful for them, uh, and what kind of got you through, or um, just even the rituals, or, you know, activities, anything that might be helpful to share with your friends. But here's some resources we have on campus. Um, and maybe probably the first one here that's mentioned is our mental health and wellness website. So it's kind of a virtual hub of all resources related to mental health and wellness. Um, some live chat options, some great videos there and resources to have a look. International office, our health services, academic accommodation, human rights office, peer-to-peer -peer service, the writing center, student union and the graduate association. And here you'll see it's called Therapy Assisted Online. You can have a look um, on the Mental Health and Wellness website or the counseling uh, site. And it's an online platform. You can look at your own case uh, and go through some different counseling modules that could be helpful. Some resources we listed here, some um, kind of numbers that you can call or text in real time, usually 24 hours a day. Good to talk. Empowered Me, if you have coverage under the health plan. Our mental health crisis line here in Ottawa, Tele-Edu-Taiwe, and some list of emergency services and hospitals. At the University of Ottawa, here are the counseling services available. You can email us at counseling at uottawa.ca. Give us a call. Check out our YouTube channel with lots of different webinars and resources that could be helpful. Different, you know, online and virtual groups. Uh, that could fit for you. And if you'd like to explore some of this content in more detail, you know, definitely book an appointment with us. We'd be happy to meet with you and talk about a plan of different resources and services that is the best fit for you. So thank you. We're all in this together. We're all going through lots of changes and it does have an impact. And hopefully some of these things we talked about uh, will get you to Think about what you're doing already, that's great, and maybe add in a couple of new things. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.